Let's do this thing. All right. I <laughs> got it. Welcome to Just Between Us Girls. This is Columbus's hub for inclusive conversations on building success in male-dominated fields. Whether it's through empowerment, support, or advocacy, we talk all things professional development and breaking the glass ceiling. Welcome to another episode of Just Between Us Girls. I am your host, Ariani, and today we are interviewing Christy Daniel. Thank you so much for joining us today, Christy. Um, I wore Elford red today. Thank you. you. I know. This is beautiful. I love <laughs> the feathers. You. It's great. Yeah. Um, I wanted to bring you onto the show because I think you bring a lot of different perspective um, from the brokerage um, point of view, especially, mm-hmm. and as a woman in brokerage, uh, and as someone that is super experienced. So I would love to hear a little bit about what you do, sure. where you're at, and where you came from. How sure. did this all start? Absolutely. Well, uh, right now I am a Vice President Principal at Elford Realty. Uh, we're based out of uh, Grandview, Ohio, and I do um, I focus mainly on commercial um, office and medical space, representing office tenants, uh, uh, landlords, owners, sellers, you know, sellers, buyers, mm-hmm. and uh, help them really with their real estate and developers. So I work yeah. with a lot of different developers as well. That's awesome. And corporations. So. How did you start? Like, how did this all, because yeah. I don't, I, did you grow up and were like, okay, I want to be yeah. a broker. No, for sure not. For yeah. hospitals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. No, actually, and I think we've talked about this a few times, but for me, it started um, really just by accident. Um, I was a... Um, I grew up in Hilliard and uh, Worthington, and uh, right out of high school, I started uh, managing some apartments, mm-hmm. which in of itself is weird that uh, anybody trusted an 18-year-old to I was going to say, did you get a discount manage, on your rent? I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I did. I did, yeah. So, uh, no, my, which is, it's actually my now father-in-law, um, mm-hmm. you know, saw something in me back, back then when I was 18 years old and said, hey, I have a job available that uh, would manage... I think it was about 200 uh, apartments in Dublin, Mm -hmm. uh, and I think you'd be great for it. So uh, I did that uh, the entire time I was at uh, Ohio State University, um, going to school there. And then I think it was my sophomore year. I think communications. It was just communications. me too. Yeah. (laughs) That's so funny. Yeah, yeah. So um, it was a... um, it was a great job. My boss at the time, um, you know, just kind of let me do my thing as long as the apartments were leased and I was doing my job. I went to school full time. Around my sophomore year in um, college, I went uh, and got my um, real estate license mm-hmm. so that I could be a licensed uh, real estate agent. And uh, then when I graduated from Ohio State in 99, I decided I didn't want to do uh, residential really. I just thought, you know, I'd like to try something a little different. My dad at the time knew somebody at CB Richard Ellis, which is now just CBRE, mm-hmm. and um, got me an interview there. And uh, so right out of college in 1999, I started... In the uh, number one real estate company yeah, in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm still, deal. again, not certain how that happened, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So I started there right out of college, um, super young and uh, really focused. I was just an associate and started in the office sort of, uh, you know, space and uh, was very fortunate that I had some of the uh, older older mentors that kind of took me under their wing and sort of trained me. Yeah. Um, so I was there for, um, gosh, I don't even know now. It's been a minute. Um, but I was there for, you know, five or so years and then um, went over to Cushman, uh, which oh, it's actually yeah. different at the time. It was a different group uh, than it is now. But in about 2010, when the recession had uh, been, yeah. you know, had hit, um, I ended up going inside and uh, was uh, system director of real estate for uh, Ohio Health. Oh so gosh. I did real estate um, transactions, development, uh, strategy for them for five years. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, uh, my current business partner, Andy Mills, and I uh, decided that uh, it was time. And I joined him over at Alfred Realty as a principal there. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's been uh, over nine years now. Over nine years? Yeah. You're almost a decade at Alfred? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. It's crazy. Girl. I know. It's been you a long time. I think is really impressive about like your tenure in most places has been at least five years or something right. of the like. Right. Um, yeah. I think that is not very much what we're seeing these days. Yeah. What do you think it was that, why do you think that is? Well, actually, when I look back, you know, I, I actually think that that felt to me at the time like a lot of hopping, right? Because now yeah. it's very different. But when our folks were growing up, you stayed somewhere for 20, 30 years and yes. that's your career. That's where you retired and you worked. So at the time, I, you know, I even look back today and I'm like, what was I thinking when I left <laughs> these places? But I truly believe that, you know, each of those um, experiences and opportunities were just stepping stones to yeah. the next place that I was supposed to be, right? And the yeah. relationships that I, uh, you know, made there and all that I learned from each and every part of those jobs 
is really what got me to where I am today, almost 25 years later in, yeah. in the business. So I, I think that's really interesting what you said there, especially because like these days we're seeing like one to two years yeah. and then people, and it's almost like people are being advised that way right. of like, oh, if you want to keep making more money, you have to keep yeah. keeping jobs. Right. Um, did every move for you, and I know we're going off script, feel that lateral? Was. Like did everything feel, um, or not lateral, but did, did it all feel like a step up? Or do you think that there were positions that you took more for the knowledge or more for um, I would say probably more for the opportunity right yeah so CB I was I loved it I still love all those that was a you know great experience like mm -hmm. some of those guys um, were my mentors and really uh, lifted me up and gave me you know opportunity mm -hmm. and taught me really well there um, and then I think just as things came along and opportunities came along I think it was you know, again, I look back and I'm like, what, what was I thinking at the time that I made those decisions? And, um, but each and every decision really, uh, I made such great friends, like lifelong friends and yeah. like great partnerships. And I think when you do that a little bit, you sort of, um, you take a little piece of each, right? Yeah. So you take like the strengths or the things that you sort of lean in on uh, with each mentor or each person yeah. that you encounter that's teaching you along the way. And then and you, even each position. And yeah, each position. That, like, yeah. What and, you have to do. and how it all works together and yeah. what you have to do. And I think that for me, I took a piece of everybody and I just sort of said, okay, this piece. And you kind of just, that's how you mold yourself and that's yeah. how you um, sort of become the professional and person that you want to be is by sort of taking, you know, all of the lessons that you've learned and um, some, you know, sticking more than others and, and then just sort of becoming who you are. Absolutely. And then hopefully, you know, paying it forward and being a mentor to others. So, yeah. Yeah. That's something I will say um, is really interesting how much sometimes you don't think that an experience or a thing is going to directly impact you in 10 years and you right. get to use the skill that got you through one thing to go through another. Um, and I know that you said kind of, um, so your dad used to have Hallmark stores yeah. or had yeah, a my dad, my stepmom. Yep. Okay. Yep. So tell, talk to me a little bit about that and yeah. how even that gave you some a yeah. leg up in the business world. Well, yeah, I think, um, you know, I think as we've talked about here a little bit, when you are, we, you know, you and I've been talking about doing this podcast for a couple months now. And so it's easy to only think about what's going on right now, what's going on in the future. But it's a great opportunity to look back and say, where did I begin? Who are all of the, the people that got me to that where I am and who were good examples for me? So, yeah. you know, my parents divorced when I was young and my mom, uh, my dad traveled a ton. And uh, so while I'm, I was super close to my father before his death um, and really from a business perspective, like I look back and my mom was really the... The, you know, the, the mom that was working and, you know, taking us, getting our schoolwork done and making yeah. sure we did our home, you know, I mean, our getting to us to our games and all Which the things. Which is a whole other job. It's a whole <laughs> other job, right? And until you are a little bit further along in life, you don't realize all of those, those moments that sort of make you who you are and who yeah. have, and like those that have instilled that work ethic in you. My mom still works really hard today yeah. and I'm so grateful for her. And so, you know, I think in my dad, he has always been like the consummate a businessman you yeah. know and his work ethic was sort of just through the roof almost to a default kind of almost to like hey you need to Chill. relax a little yeah. bit <laughs> yeah. but yeah he and my stepmom they had hallmark stores and but even while he had hallmark stores for the majority of the time he also had a sales job like a traveling yeah. sales job so he just traveled a bunch when i was growing up um but you know i think through through all of that and uh, i think that's just sort of where my my work ethic sort of came from uh mm -hmm. to originate but i also think too like for me i wasn't a great student yeah. I, I, I think we've talked about this. I didn't do well in school. I struggled. And I think back then, um, you know, uh, it's not like the school districts now where they really have a lot of safety nets in place to help yeah. protect kids and not and just pass them out. through. They try to figure it out yeah. and correct it before it becomes a lifelong problem. And so yeah. I don't, I was never like diagnosed with any sort of like whatever, but I just remember like it, like I just didn't learn easy. Like it always took a lot of extra, 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 extra. Whereas mm -hmm. like my husband could like read, it was my now husband, you know, could study something and get like a really good grade. I would yeah. be doing color coded like uh, like no nope, parts or whatever. And I would, yeah, I would indexes, get like a worse grade, like, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, I would spend hours and hours and hours. And that's just how people learn. It's no yeah. right way or wrong way. But that's just, so I think for me, like the where I am today is because I always felt like I had to work up extra, right? Yeah. And a lot of people work extra, but you know, this is my journey and my story. So I just felt like it, nothing has always, uh, not everything has come easy to me. And so I've always had to put the extra time in and extra energy. Yeah. And also I think when you feel um, a little insecure, um, you know, when you just don't learn things as easily, I think that it makes you work harder, right? Exactly. It makes you want to be prepared. Ask, did you yeah. ever feel like 
resentful about the fact that you did have to like push harder just to get the same results yeah. or not. And or like, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Right. But I think it's one of those things in life. You just got to put your head down and go. Yeah. You know, I think I am today. I'm very, and my colleagues will tell you, I'm very task oriented. I yeah. don't, um, I like to get things done. I'm, you know, all of the things. And I think that's probably, I, I got that, um, because I always had to work a little extra harder. Yeah. And um, so you had to put systems in place to support you mm -hmm. to know, cause that's something I feel like a lot of the times if you know that you are deficient in a certain place yeah. and, and, or you know that there are certain strengths that you have that lie in other places, right. um, putting in the safety nets, like if you're forgetful, make a to do checklist right, right. or whatever it may be. What do you think that kind of looked like for you? Like in what ways do you feel you supported yourself through? Okay. I know I got to do this extra work. Right. What are the extra things that have allowed me to now build these systems that now support me right. 25 years later? Yeah. Well, I would say to you initially, I don't think I even, it didn't even occur to me. Right. Yeah. It was just like, this is who I am. This is what I, what I got to do. You know, all of those things. So I think over the years, um, I mean, look, I'm still figuring it out. Right. Yeah. I was, um, I have this, like in the last year and a half, I've been working with a, a coach, like, a, yeah. a, I would say career. Okay. Executive coaching. Yeah, like a career yeah. coach. She's based out of Connecticut. Her name's Corey. And she has just helped me uh, incredibly in ways that I never even thought. And it's really mostly just by asking me questions and making me, like, you know, see things for myself. But yeah. she's given me so many tools and, and things like that. But I would say, you know, career coach, but now friend, right? Yeah. So I really lean on her a lot. And um, it it, you have to be intentional about yeah. what you're doing. You know, you have to be intentional about wanting to, you know, succeed and, and, you know, do a good job. And be willing to put in that extra whatever it yeah. is. Like, I don't, one of the reasons I asked the resentful question is because yeah. sometimes you get angry about your circumstance and yeah. then you decide not to. Right. Just not to. Because yeah. you're yeah. like, well, I'm, I'm pissed. Right, right. I don't want to yeah. do this. Yeah, I mean, certainly I'm sure there are days where I'm yeah, like, ah, this would be so much easier. But then you yeah. pick back up and yeah. got on the mule. And right. that's right. something for all of you listening right now. Like, yeah. you have to pick up. Yeah. and decide to get on the horse. Yeah. And if for every bad experience that you have, you decide that you're gonna put the pencil down, then how will you ever get to where you need to be going? Right. Um, I also wanna loop back around to you saying that you have an executive coach. Um, Alicia Mitchell, who I had a couple episodes ago, she also said that she has one. Okay. And I think that sometimes we look at people that are in places we aspire to be, or yeah. you know, someone like yourself that's in such an amazing, I mean, you're doing amazing. Thank you. I hope, yeah. I hope someone has told you. But, yeah. um, and you don't think that they have someone that they are also leaning on. Yeah. I recently, in full disclosure, um, asked Christy to yeah. be my mentor. Um, and you're amazing. And thank you so much. Oh it's my God. An honor. Thank yeah. you. I, no, like, yeah. I literally am like shaking. I'm like, Christy, I, I know we just met, but like, I just really want to know if you <laughs> Well, no, I love that. I, you know, I've told you some from like coffee one, like you're just yeah. such a great energy and I was just thank honored you. to be able to be part of any of your world. So yeah, yeah thank you for that. And I yeah. appreciate just like having someone like I, a lot of the times I'm bouncing things off, um, from Adam who was in our organization yeah. and he's the person I see today today. Right. And he knows me and has, I believe almost like a slanted view towards, um, myself because yeah. you know, we, we yeah. see each other. Yeah. We love each other. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought it was going to be really, really important to start having someone that had more of an objective point of view because they can give you a little bit more level-headed response on things. Yeah. Like I am currently going through some things um, I, on in, on a leadership level um, with with the, I just have never dealt with this, and it's so funny because we're always going to come across yeah. things that we've never dealt right, with. Right. But I remember going into our conversation being like. I think I'm just gonna quit. <laughs> I'm you did. You called me. I'm literally. Yeah. I'm like. I don't know yeah. what to do, and I've yeah. never had to quit something like this before. So I was like, I don't want to. Yeah. And you gave me a totally different response. And I, I did. Was like, and I God, think by the end of that conversation, 30 minutes later, I said, I sense you don't want to quit. Like yeah. you just don't, right? So you just gotta work through the variables and the different personalities and perspectives and try to find common ground, and then you'll know, right? Yeah. If it doesn't work, right? If somebody doesn't meet you where you need to be or meet the board where it needs to be, then, um, yeah, I think you just have, you'll know that, but you just don't, yeah. you know, I think, um, part of, uh, it's just like my, even my dad growing up was just always like, you know, you guys, to my, my siblings and I, mm -hmm. um, you know, you just, if you start something, yeah. you finish it. Right. So you don't quit. And so I've tried to teach yeah. my kids that, right. Uh, you try to say, listen, you don't like this, whatever you're doing, you finish it and then we don't have to do it again. But you just, you stick with it. You start yeah. something. You don't just quit because it's uncomfortable. Or you it's, say what or you said you're going to do. You say what you say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's one of the things, um, funnily enough, is like one of our like core values mm -hmm. um, at Thompson because we really notice, especially with contractors, 
a lot of the times the threshold is as low as they never emailed me back. Yeah. They never followed up. Yeah. They never showed up in the first place, whatever. And so me and Adam joke often about how like half of the work of doing a great job on our end is just doing what oh, we said. Yeah. Oh my do. gosh. You don't even understand. And so that's yeah, it's business. It's life. It's that's one thing. Um, yeah. So, you know, when I was at Ohio health, like I such great leaders there and we'll get to this, but like so many uh, amazing female leaders that yeah. I was just in awe of while I was there. But uh, so from coming from brokerage, right. Yes. All men, all male, mostly men. Um, and then going into this amazing healthcare system that had just such great women in leadership and then going back to brokerage, um, I just remember like my one of my golden rules was you just have to communicate you just have to respond if you have nothing to communicate you communicate right like yes. so and so and if you say you're going to do it you do and if you can't do it, you tell them why you can't do it exactly right you just yeah. let yeah. people know and, exactly and you get ahead of and people are fine with it if they it, don't hear anything as, they're not fine with it right? exactly yeah. as long as at the end of the day because like here's the thing i think a lot of the times people will avoid communication if they don't have a positive... Right. If it's going to be uncomfortable. If it's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah, right. But I think the thing about being uncomfortable is, wouldn't you want to save that uncomfortable time for as little time as it possibly yeah. has to be? right. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things I think that has really allowed me to, like, I unfortunately have had to, and I think as we all have, have had to be a part of uncomfortable conversations or situations or, like, yeah. you know, I know I'm going to disappoint this person. But a lot of the times, half the battle is just rip off the band-aid yeah just and do it's, it. it's easier to say than to do but i think the more that you get in the habit of i'm gonna rip off the band-aid today yeah, just do it i'm gonna do the hard yeah. thing i'm gonna kill right. the frog that is something yeah. my best friend tells me all the time yeah. she goes to the gym at ungodly hours <laughs> <laughs> and whenever she comes back we'll like talk and she's like i killed the frog today Thank and you. if nothing else now you get to carry on with the rest of your day right. knowing. Knowing it's not hanging out there and you're not like still need to do it. Yeah. Exactly. No, absolutely. There's no reason to put off and make it even more uncomfortable by the time you get to it. Yeah. Because that right. just like the, the, the rolling ball picks up the elements and absolutely. becomes a boulder. And then it just becomes too big and it didn't yeah. need to be, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. No, 100%. Communication is always very important in, yeah. in all things. So Coming yeah. into you um, talking about having like great female leaders and mm -hmm. also coming from brokerage where it's very male dominated very male dominated yeah i think a lot of times when we talk about male dominated fields and women in them there's a very negative conversation around it yeah of yeah. like yeah. hate this this should never be what it is and don't get me wrong it's <laughs> not great right yeah but it is where we are at yeah and it's been, yeah. yeah i have found in my experience like one of the positive things about being a woman in a male dominated field is i think i've been able to change a lot of Opinions. I've been able to be a lot of in a lot of yeah. conversations where maybe a voice like mine wasn't represented before. Right. Um, what are your thoughts just around what you have seen, what you have been through, and how yeah. you think maybe you've affected change? Yeah. You know, I think for me, um, I uh, started very young. I mean, I was what 21, 22 when I started in the industry. Yeah. Different. It was different back then, right? Even than yeah. it is now. So it's just all different. So for me, it was really just making sure I was doing the work, yeah. learning my industry, learning my craft asking questions, being curious. I was mentored by some great people. And so I just really uh, embraced that. And I tried, even though it was there, right? Even yeah. though it's, it is a, it's still a male dominated industry. Um, but I will say that if you are doing deals and you are, you, you know what you're doing and you communicate and uh, then it, it, the, the female male thing is a little less. I mean, it's yeah. still there, but um, I would say that, you know, my dad, you, I've just had to find ways to integrate myself, right? Yeah. And so, and I think I've done that. And showing up to do that. Yeah. Because I think when we avoid the spaces that we don't feel represented in, or yeah. when we decide not to be a part of conversations yeah. that it may be a little uncomfortable to be in, then we don't allow ourselves or the others the experience of, you know what, actually, Christy brought up some great points yeah. today. Right. And like right. the female male thing goes to the wayside because. Christy spoke intelligently about and something that's going on. she knows her business. And she, she is trustworthy it. and she uh, is educated and, and she's an expert in her area, yeah. right? So it's funny, when I first started in the industry, I guess it has been about 25 years ago now almost, yeah. um, my dad said, uh, listen, if you're going to be in business, number one, and also business where it's, and you're in an industry that's male dominated, yeah. you need to learn to play golf right? Yeah. So he took me out, he taught me how to play golf and I still play golf, right? Because those are just the things you have to do, right? It is what, I mean, it's, it's the reality of it, right? Yeah. Do I wish there were more women in our space? A hundred percent, right? Always, yeah. Um, but there are some really great women. So it's yeah. almost like, let's not focus on the number and focus on the, the great women that are, are in here and have succeeded for a really yeah. long time doing this. You Quality know? over quantity. Absolutely. It's and like you know, anything. Yeah. You, you lean into like, 
at the end of the day, unfortunately, we will always have at least one negative experience. Yeah, absolutely. And these things are going to happen across, like you said, yeah. just in business in general, across our lifetime. It's not all going to smell like daisies. No, nope, it's However, not. However, mostly yeah. it's what you decide to lean into. It's like mm. the the grass that you water, right? It's yeah. You lean into. You know what? Okay, this person or this um, instance, I wasn't. I didn't have a great time, and right. I wasn't right. there for, and, right. and I didn't love it, but. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to schedule five coffees with amazing women that I want to right, see. Right. Or go and see the people that we want to be able to. Like, for example, like even um, my first meeting with Matt Gregory. I was like, I'm going to see you every month. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, Matt Gregory's just, amazing. So yeah, that's like, first of all. He's a great mean, first guest for you. Yeah. yeah he's really he was a good, the perfect first guest. You know, just a top notch uh, human. He's, he's just a good human. He is how we got yeah. connected. Yeah. But I will say to you that um, my my uh, my original mentor, probably one of my first mentors at CB, Richard Ellis, which is what it was back then. I know it's CBRE now, but uh, no, uh, Todd Greiner, and um, he just said, "Hey, Chris, you're just you got to learn. This is a business that is not for the faint of heart. You got to yeah. have a thick skin. You just do." And so I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think you can develop a thick skin. You can, um, you know do all the work and you're still going to have moments where guys talk to you know what I mean it's still going to be sort of that male uh sort of dominant uh environment but I do think that the more integrated you become yeah you know you definitely you know give it as much as it's given and you just kind of just have to learn to um be professional and and you just said it like if you know what you're talking about people will know it's it becomes less of a man female and it becomes um, more of a person person thing yeah that's something I will say, um, just overall, the more that you, I think, encounter people and you think about the things that set you apart from them, yeah. also maybe try switching the, switching the convo there yeah. and making it, making it a human interaction by just showing up as a human. Right. I mean, listen, I think yeah. at the end of the day, what we're doing is not curing anything. We're not curing cancer. We're not doing, you know what I mean? It's important, mm-hmm. right? But at the same time, it's just really, it's how humans treat humans. And I've always, yeah. my dad used to you know, treat the, any, any, everybody the same, you know, yeah. you treat everybody with uh, respect and kindness. And, you know, I think a lot of the leadership training I've had over the years, it's really, um, you just have to be curious. Yeah. You have to ask questions. You have to be a sponge. You just have yeah. to take it all in. And I will say that you have to show up like you want to be there. You do. You have to want to be there. You got to put in the time and you speak, but not just to speak, right? You speak when you are, um, prepared and, and have the knowledge that you need to speak. Yeah. Um, but I would say that, like, we in Columbus, though, are very fortunate in our brokerage community. So I can say um, that all of us are, are pretty much, we're all friends. In every firm, we're friends. So that makes doing this a lot, uh, a lot of fun. And it makes doing it uh, when we're on the opposite side of the negotiation table with clients uh, easier because it's, you're not really worried about them getting mad. It just makes it easier when you have it to have, when you have to have a tough conversation that you can, that you're like, okay, this person knows me, they respect me. Yeah. Um, and this isn't going to, you know, this, this conversation is probably going to be easier yeah. because of that. And I think we all just really want what's best for each other, you yeah. know? Um, so I think, you know, male, female, we do have some great females, uh, in our industry. And so, this, you know, again, what we said earlier, it's less about the the quantity and it's the quality, you know, I mean, uh, there's lots of us. Um, and then there's some young ones coming up and, you know, there's, uh, Jackie delay who works uh, with me on my, my and Andy's team. And she's been with us, uh, about four and a half years and she's Mm -hmm. fantastic. She's so smart and so good. And, uh, she's really picked it up quickly and, uh, is really making a name for herself. So it's great to see that, you know? And so for me, I, you know, I've always been more like just kind of a guy's girl too, a little bit. So I think it's, it's been a little, I just tried to integrate myself the way I can just, you know, and, but also through my work. Yes. You know, that's, that that's speaks the most important part. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's the most important part of it all. Like, cause I even realized like for me, um, but a lot of my job is just being, being, yeah. being around. Yeah. Um, yeah. Being you present. do great with that. And yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I noticed before I really started to lean in into showing up online at events, going to all the things. People didn't have enough context for who I was in order to even have an an opinion, opinion. a judgment, whatever, on me. Yeah. 
And that's one of the things that I think a lot of times the mistake is made there. Yeah. You have to allow people the opportunity to know who you are right. so that then the the opinion is not about, oh, this is a woman. It's the opinion is about, this is Ariani. She knows what she's <laughs> this doing. Is, this, this is, is, is her Ariane. space. This is what she does. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. So also it's funny. My um, dad used to always say to me and my siblings, um, like, you need to be respected before you are liked. Yes. Right. And I would always go, well, of course, I'm, but if I'm liked, then I'm going to be respected. Yeah, and then I had an incident with a client like, a couple years ago where clearly the person liked me, yeah. but definitely didn't respect me. And so that was like, I was like an aha moment with yeah. me, with my dad. I, like my, I was like, oh, wait, for 30 years he's been telling me this, and this is what he means. This yeah. is like the exact example of what it means. And it irritated me. I think, too, it's just like as much as you have to earn respect, you people need to uh, get it from you, right? Like they have to yeah. earn your respect. And so, exactly. it, but it's hard. It's hard when it's a, it's you in an in a, in a environment where you are, you know, you're one of the few women in a room. I can't tell you how many times I'm the only woman in a room, right? Yeah. But honestly, I've been doing it long enough that that doesn't even really cross my mind anymore. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think I've, I've, done, an, I've done enough. I've um, been around enough. And um, I think that I think you do get a little less tolerant as you get older, right? I think it's kind of like, oh you my decide. gosh, yeah, uh. yeah. But also, like, I also don't care. Like, I also don't mind speaking my mind either. But I do think yeah. you choose your battles, right? Because not everything's a war, yeah. right? Not everything is whatever. And I think a lot of times people don't intentionally mean to be a certain way or be disrespectful yeah. in, in that regard. But, uh, yeah, I think it's um, – you just got to – got to go in there and I think the more you uh the 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 more you know about your industry the more you uh, make connections and relationships I mean our business is a relationship business exactly it is not a commercial real estate or uh you know rest it is a uh we are a people business we are a relationship business and uh, you know that's where Andy Mills my my business partner I mean that's our that's we've you know that's been our whole mantra right we just build our business off relationships and uh it's worked fine for us and um but we also care. We care a lot about our clients. We care a lot about doing a good job and being ethical and um, just having good integrity. Like integrity wins always, right? Mm-hmm. Always trying to do the right thing and being because a good then person. That way your intentions can't be questioned. You're right. Like I've had situations and always keep your receipts, my people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had situations yeah. where people have questioned my intention in certain things. Yeah. I mean, and when it's you're insulting, right? So insulting yeah. because then yeah. you're like, oh, so you don't know me. Yeah. Yeah. And and that is where it's important. Show up, have have those conversations, and be in that space enough to where should something come up about your integrity or yeah. about your person, yeah. yeah, you can be like, nope, you yeah. know me, yeah, you right. know me. I mean, that's all you have is your integrity, right? So exactly. whenever that's questioned, you definitely, I mean, you got to be able to back it up with more than. Oh you my know. gosh, yeah. I mean, that's I, I care more about that than anything. I care about how. Like, uh, you know, my colleagues and friends and family, I mean, to me, it matters. Um, you know, and people say you shouldn't care what people think about you, but I, to a certain degree, you should, right? Exactly. I think you really should because if you're that being. That's your a, adult scorecard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, are you a good card. human, right? Are you a good human? Yeah. Because people aren't going to be like, oh, well, Chrissy did XYZ deals necessarily, right? When they're going to think of me as overall, they're going to yeah. say, you know what, she was. Um, you know, she was a good person. She tried to do the right thing. She tried to represent her clients. Uh, she was, you know, uh, you know, and that's how I would think about others, right? Like, exactly. I think we all just try to do the right thing. And I would say, again, I think our industry, our commercial uh, real estate um, sort of world here in Columbus, we're so fortunate because I do think we all really genuinely like each other. And I think yeah. we um, really like working with each other, which makes doing deals fun, right? Yeah. Even when they're hard, even when, and, which by the way, every deal is hard, right? Yeah. As you exactly. know, right? Yeah. Everything's yeah. hard. <laughs> Um, but Always. everything's hard and it's, and it, there's a lot of variables involved and lots of things you can't control, but yeah. I think you just have to, um, sort of, you know, vet it out and try to do the best you can. You yeah. know what I mean? And again, in our, our industry, so at Elford Realty, we have more women than men in brokerage, which Ooh, I know, slay. right? I give that to Andy. Uh, but no, thank so you, I think, yeah, thank you, Andy. But, uh, no, I don't think that was like intentional. I think for us, yeah. it's about, uh, Andy and I are both at a point in our career where, it's not about growing this this firm to be as big as it can be. It's about uh, really only having folks with us that align sort of with our uh, sort of our yeah yeah just aligning with what our beliefs are and just trying to do the right thing and uh, and so that just so happens there's myself uh, and then Jackie who I mentioned and then Lauren Alexander came back to us. She did uh, real estate in Chicago for a while. A single mom of three kids, just killing it, doing great. That's uh, awesome. You know, and then there's just there's a lot of females in our industry that. Um, you know, I'm super proud of, you know, yeah. I, I'm very proud to, uh, to do deals with. It's just, there just happens to be more men. I don't know why. I don't know why that's not changed after all this time, but, 
um, you know, it is what it is, right? But so. I think the way you change that too is slowly, you know, we have conversations like this mm -hmm. and we sit down and we almost like get to a point where we discuss how how we can all be better as an industry. Yeah. And that's how you start pulling in more people that just right. want to be a part of something right. bigger than that. Bigger, right. And yeah. that's where like, I don't know, I feel like I like sometimes when I'm talking to people, they'll be like, God, but that's so like ethereal, like the thought of just like we're gonna make the world better yeah, and like right. but you literally we all have the direct power within our spheres of influence yeah. to change the way that people feel about a certain community, a certain field, a certain whatever. And the more good faith that you put out there and the more good that you're willing to lend to whatever you're doing, whatever yeah. people will be doing, right. The more that that conversation changes and the more maybe we're will maybe we have more women join. Right. Just yeah. because they're like, "Oh yeah. my god, Chris was on the podcast." <laughs> And Listen, it's not easy. I'm not, I'm not yeah. going to say that it's, it's a walk in the park because it's definitely not, but it takes, it takes like anything. It takes yeah. time. It takes diligence. But if it's worth it. And you know, I mean, there are definitely days where I'm like, can I retire? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Today. But, you know, and I say that, but honestly, you know, I, I don't know what I would do, but, um, yeah. so yeah, no. And you know, I think there's, um, for me, it's about, um, trying to be a good role model, right? I have a daughter who is uh, a senior at Miami University in college, and she's a rock star, just doing great things, and yeah. she'll be graduating soon. So, you know, I, I've tried to do the work-life balance situation, yeah. right? Which is kind of what which led me. Hard in sales. Like, it's so hard in sales. Yeah. And what, honestly, what kind of led me to leave Ohio Health, because I, the, the more you take on there, just, you're just in a lot of meetings. It's just corporate. Nothing yeah. wrong with it. Just what it is. My kids were younger then, and um, my daughter, you know, Andy and I have been friends for a long, long time, and he was like, hey, I'm going to go over and start this brokerage firm at Elford. I want you to be, come with me and do it. And uh, it took me a long time to make the decision because I really enjoyed my job at Ohio Health. But yeah. uh, at the same time, I was also very aware that I was exhausted. And my kids, I didn't miss anything of my kids, but I was with that mom running in last minute. My phone's mm -hmm. blowing up the whole time. I just definitely wasn't always present and so you, said you found like a note in one of your I, journals I just once. found yeah my and I actually just found uh, a note the other day in my office but my daughter when she was maybe in um, middle school at the time right Did that math add up mm -hmm. uh, so uh, she was maybe in middle school and she had heard my husband and I talking about this opportunity with Elford and she heard that I would be um, I would be home more I would have more flexibility I would yeah. you know and she just really was like why don't you just take that right and I was like uh, okay so you know clearly I thought I was able to balance it and I probably wasn't balancing yeah. it as well as I thought I was and candidly I was tired so um, so it started this whole other you know I had to get back out there and do the brokerage thing and we had to build our uh, book of business and you know we, you know doing all that just takes time yeah. so um, but yeah so I think it's like I try, I've tried to I'm sure I failed a lot yeah. I know I don't I'm not sure I know that I have <laughs> failed a lot at certain times but I think though I hope my kids know that I've always done it with you know with them in mind and yeah. I've always tried to be a good role model for them especially you know for females I have nieces I have you know my daughter and you know I I've got um, my family we've got such strong women you know I've yeah. got my my uh, sister-in-law just got her PhD from Ohio oh my gosh, State that's awesome after eight years oh my gosh what's uh, her of name being at Courtney Irwin oh, congratulations Courtney and Irwin. uh and she got that after eight years of being a full-time bio uh AP biology teacher at Dublin Jerome and uh, also awesome. by raising three kids so she just graduated with her PhD, and then I have a little sister Sarah, who's lit. she's thirty five. Well, she's eleven she's years younger than me. She's my baby sister. <laughs> she's killing it, and her job continues to yeah. grow and grow while raising two kids, and uh, and a lot of others in my my family and uh, my my friends' kids and girls. And yeah. so I think it's you just got to find what you're passionate about and just you know dig in and and you got to do the work, right? Yeah. You, you got to got to put yourself out there you got to go to you know be face to face with people yeah. and um just make build relationships which That's i think is a little harder now for kids it is harder yeah and we're, we're in a landscape that is prioritizing here's the thing i'm all for comfort i i love some comfort yeah right right <laughs> but right. i will say that i think we're in a landscape right now that really is prioritizing comfort over connection yeah and people not really caring to go and see other people and that yeah. is like the very fabric that makes up a lot 100%. of what we do i mean the phones right the phones have taken that away right? yeah it's been yeah. a lot access is easier to everything yeah. out there that they don't feel like they need to do that yeah right and don't get me wrong so have, like yeah there's space for that yeah there is definitely space for that but also 
if you just never know what opportunity awaits you in a room with a bunch of people you don't know. Yeah. And that's really daunting for people that maybe that's not their jam. Like, yeah. I don't necessarily want to talk to a bajillion people. Yeah. But to that I say, then go with the intention of meeting one person. Right. Put just, yourself out there. Get out of your comfort exactly. zone. Exactly. Even if you only see one yeah. person all night and you only talk to that one person, yeah. you've talked to one extra I will tell person. you, though, this is funny. My friends make fun of me because I actually am, I can be, or I'm less now because I'm older, but... For a good chunk of my life, pretty um, pretty shy. Yeah. Right? And people are like, what? Like, you talk all the time. Yeah. But when you would, like, even my husband would make fun of me. Like, you walk into a room with a bunch of people, I'd always be like, you go first. I don't want anybody <laughs> to look at me. I don't want to talk. I don't yeah. want to do any of that. So I still have a little bit of anxiety. Yeah. But you do have to, like, put yourself out there and, like, get yourself out of your comfort zone yeah. and just say, you know, these are just people, right? Yes. We're all just people. We're all just you know, people. Everybody has their own insecurities, their own things going on in their worlds and and all that. And one, one person I actually did not mention who was also a big piece of me uh, just having such admiration for women when I was younger is my, well, he's my husband, uh, his mother, uh, Linda Daniel. She um, was one of the women to pioneer women's athletic training at Ohio State. Oh my gosh. She's a superstar, rock star. She's a PT, all the things. So I met Matt, my husband, when I was um, 17. So we've been together since 17. So I started dating in my senior year and um, this woman was just smart, funny, raising three boys, doing it all. You know, I was always yeah. like, does she sleep? Back, you know, when you're in high school, <laughs> you're like, like I just want to sleep. Never. So I was not. like, I don't think she sleeps. I'm like, why is she up this early? You know, anyway. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, she got sick uh, our sophomore year of college, mm -hmm. passed away in 2000. But we wow. still, uh, I mean, her legacy still lives on. So I think yeah. part of that, and my daughter's a lot like her. So I think, um, you know, I think part of maybe my drive, too, in addition to being, you know, watching my mom uh, be a single mom, uh, yeah. you know, when my, you know, as, as we were young, and then my, watching my dad have such a good, and everybody around me uh, be, have such a good work work ethics I think she was also one that I was like man she's cool like yeah this is cool she's figured it out and she's you know made her place in her space like yeah. for what she did and um I mean we're still giving out uh you know the, the university still giving out scholarships to, for people every day in her name so yeah. and you know and my like I said earlier in the podcast my father-in-law Bill was the one that really like saw something in me I actually said to him recently I'm like what were you thinking <laughs> yeah. like what did you see I don't even <laughs> understand what that was but I worked yeah. at the Hallmark stores um you know during high school and, yeah. and all those things so I think you just have to you develop it over the years and you just have to decide if uh you know you just have to find ways to you know, make it your own. You yeah. Know? So. And I think that's the thing that makes people um, decide that mm -hmm. you're worth the shot. Yeah. Is they're like, she really brought her to the table. Yeah. And like authenticity and just like that confidence to show up authentically is something that's come up a couple times on the podcast. Yeah. But I think the biggest thing is even recognizing the differences that you may have to someone. Like, for example, one of the reasons that I actually asked you to be my mentor is because we are very different in yeah. that. I, I feel like you show up with this demeanor of like, I am gonna show up exactly who I am and what I yeah. am and where I am. Yeah. And seeking out people too that specifically fill those holes that maybe you You're know not, that yeah. you need a little more yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that is something that's really important. Yeah. I say my kids, number one, would tell you I'm not even keel. They would say, <laughs> you ask too many questions, you're blah, 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 blah. But that's, that's nice of you to say that. Yes. Um, yeah, no, I think... Um, yeah, it's always good to align yourself and surround yourself with people that are different than you, yeah. right? Because everybody has a different perspective. And like I said earlier, you know, from each of your mentors, you take a little bit of something from each. Exactly. And you sort of to have and multiple. It, yeah, and it just becomes like who you are, right? So yeah. I think that, um, yeah, I just think that you just have to be open to all sorts of relationships and, you know, you're, and then you'll find your path and who you are. Like, like I said, every place that you go and every conversation you have is just... Uh, a stepping stone like I talked to Matt Gregory uh one breakfast and it was a net, it was like a, a networking breakfast that we do and mm -hmm. you he just said he had done this we were talking about actually what we were talking about was we were talking about his in, he hires some um younger interns yes you know a lot more than any other firm I think does generally and um, I was kind of like saying oh how many women you know like joking around a little bit yeah and he was like you're right did it and then we start talking about you and then I said oh and so I too think it's funny um and and I think you and I talked about this at some point in one of our one of our gatherings <laughs> um just about how women are with other women too yes right yeah yeah we've talked about this so yeah. I think women either love working with other women and lift them up immediately or women there's a, i would say that's probably more the rule but yes. I, I would say there have there are moments where i can think of where um women just you know 
they size each other up a little bit yes. or it takes a minute, right? Yes. It just takes a minute or, or you know, I think generally, um, like for me, when people meet me after about mm-hmm. five seconds, they're like, this one, she's, she, <laughs> like, Same. she's, she's not that, it, like, well, okay, I'm good, you know? She doesn't take herself too seriously. And I think that's yeah. just, you can't take yourself too seriously, right? I probably am the, I make fun of myself more than just about anybody. Yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah. So, I don't know. I think it's been an interesting journey, um, uh, just to try to like engage with different women, you know, yeah. I mean, I had this God years ago, there was a client in New York, they owned a high rise downtown and I wasn't prepared, but this woman lo- like, she was a full New Yorker. Yes, like, let's go. And she only talked to me in this meeting. And I was yes. like, I, I don't, what are you talking? Like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, it was so weird. Right. But then there's other women that are just like, you know, they just, it, it's just a little bit of a hesitation yeah. at first it's and then like I was the yeah and yeah. I'm like hey you can have it like, yeah I, you know, literally I, I keep know. it like, yeah, right yeah. like yeah so I think it's interesting I think overall like you know everybody warms up to each other and, yeah. and it's fine but um I'd say that's I would say that's been I think I've just worked with men so long yes that it just I'm just used to being in a room with all men so yeah. majority of men so I think uh I love you know it's it's fun to work with I have a lot of really great friends in the industry um mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, Corey Cooperman's one of my best friends and she works for Newmark and she, she and I kind of started in the trenches together. We used to cold call together. Yeah. We used Love to get that. thrown out of buildings together. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> laughing every step of the way, yeah. you know, she, you know, because sometimes you gotta like, yeah, giggle at the situation. Yeah. If you don't laugh, you cry. Oh my gosh. We would get three. Yeah. And we would yeah. be, yeah. So it was, it was fun. So, and then, you know, and then there's others that have just sort of, you know, lifted me up over the years, you know, yeah. I just. Like we were talking with Jamie Jesse, she's one of my yeah. best friends, and she's been a great, you know, uh, person. And Janet, uh, who is used to be in our industry, I met her at CB. She was one that was like, "You are invading my space." <laughs> and that, and then you were like, "I'm gonna win." I had her by lunchtime. I had her by lunchtime. I was like, "I killed my fish in one day." And she's like, "Okay, I guess we'll go to lunch, right?" Yeah. So I got to hear. I got to hear. Yeah. So anyway, so lots. I've been blessed with lots and lots of uh, very strong and very, uh, you know, hardworking, smart. Uh, just amazing women. Yeah. So, you know, I just, and like I said, back at Ohio Health, like I remember I was like, I'd come from like brokerage where it's yeah. all men. And then I go into these like, lead, like in these meetings and I would be like, oh, there's like more women here than a lot of women. Like, and yeah. they, were, they were solid. They were smart. Yeah. They were, um, yeah, I just am grateful for that opportunity too. That's awesome. So, yeah, I think it's, uh, you just kind of got to go with, uh, you know, go with the opportunities and, and do the best you can and also contribute. Yes. That's all I can say is you, you need to contribute, know your industry, know your business, work hard. Be intentional, communicate, um, be curious. Yeah. You know, that's what uh, a lot of this leadership I learned uh, in some of these seminars I've gone to over the years is you just have to be curious, and by cu- being curious, you will learn, right? Exactly. And so you just have to try to just take it all in. And, and That reminds me of um, Bob's quote. Uh, Bob Weiler would say, they always talk about being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Well, I always say if you're in enough places at enough times, yeah. you'll end up in the right place. <laughs> that's right. And that's, that's really, true. Yeah. sometimes it's about looking at the, sometimes it's about just showing up, doing the things, right. and seeing what comes out of it instead right. of going in with, with a specific mission. Yeah. Because then you've set this like situation for yourself that if you don't achieve that, right. it's right. been a failure of a day. Yeah. And that's where sometimes you have to just go in with all the possibilities and then... Yeah. We will see right. where we end up. Right. And you know what? At the end of the day, just be yourself. Yeah. Right? I mean, that you got to just be your yourself. And uh, I think, you know, for the most part, people, you know, everybody has some insecurity that they're dealing yeah. with, right? And everybody has something they're dealing with at any given day. And you just have to be kind and, uh, you know, be understanding and try to find a uh, common ground on things. And, you yeah. know, I, I, that's what I've tried to, uh, you know, live my life. My, my brother and I were just laughing the other day. Uh, who you're going to get to meet next week at a golf outing. Yeah. So, Our you will, annual. <laughs> you will actually like my brother more than me because my brother's pretty cool. Girl, bye. Yeah, but no, yes, so we'll, come will, we'll come I back will to that. Back you back. actually will. He's pretty, he's pretty funny. Um, but uh, one thing my, we were laughing about the other day is uh, our dad used to say to us, um, you know, Christy, you have such great interpersonal skills, right? And I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, I can talk to people. And I always took that, like, as a compliment to my brother. And I were just, like, realizing that actually he meant, you guys are not smart, but you guys um, can talk to people really well. So we were, were, I'll take it. Yeah, we were laughing. We were like, okay, I'll you take it. You saw the positive side of yeah, it. Yeah, right? I mean, that's what like, matters. It's just really good interpersonal skills. And we're like, yeah. 
So, but you yeah. lean into what you're good at, like at the end yeah. of the day, like, look, yeah, I mean, you... listen, I'm not ever going to be a mathematician, right? Like I'm not going to, me neither. Uh, I mean, it's so funny at our office. Like I, everybody knows spreadsheets are not my thing. Right. Yes. Like, but, uh, so, but you know, it's, you just got to lean into what you're good at and know that you're good at exactly. and then ask for help when you need it or, exactly. or you know, don't pretend that you, you don't know what you, you know, know certain things. So anyway, no, it's, it's been a great, a great career. And I, again, I'm, I'm only here because of all the mentors I've had. And, yeah. and again, thank you for asking me to be your mentor because I'm super oh, honored to do that. And uh, yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, we all evolve over time. Yeah. So, you know. As we near our end, um, I have one closing question for you because I think it's like a hard thing to discuss, but we touched on it a little bit. Um, what ways would you advise um, women that maybe are dealing with situations where the women are harder on them than the men? How would you, how would you advise someone to come I think you that? just have to find ways, uh, you just have to find some common ground with them, right? I think yeah. you have to say, like we had this discussion, right? Maybe not everybody aligns or they're tough with you, but I think if you do your work, you, do your work, you work hard, you show you have a great work ethic, you show you're willing to go above and beyond, mm-hmm. um, you want to learn your craft, you want to learn your industry. I mean, it's, it's not on you then, it's on them, right? Yeah. So I think it's just, you have to remember that it's a moment in time. Yeah. And that, uh, you this know. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. Well, it's funny. So I, I mentioned earlier that my coach, Corey, uh, you know, she and I have worked through a lot of different um, things, right, as yeah. I've dealt with some things. and. Uh, we, we've come up with sayings, right? And I write stuff down and it's always like, if there's a situation that I'm like struggling with, like with work-wise, it's, I've blown it up in my head. Yeah. She'll say, write it down. Is this a perceived threat or a real threat, right? Mm-hmm. And mo- uh, almost every single time, as I look back over a year and a half, it's always perceived, right? Yeah. But then I was listening to this thing the other day and it was like, uh, what you focus on is what you will see. Exactly. So if you, you know, try to focus on the good, the, the all the benefits and the hard work, uh, and the, the opportunities that come out of a situation, and that's what you'll see. But if you continue to just focus on maybe your, these folks aren't aligned with you or you can't get past them, uh, it's just be creative. Figure out a way. Yeah. Figure out a way to get to them, right? Um, yeah. Or do your work and, and just think about, you know, all the – what you're learning from that person and then, uh, you know, maybe think about the next opportunity in your life because it's just a moment in time. Yeah. It really is. And when it comes to what you're learning about them – that doesn't mean just like in a positive light. Sometimes you can learn what not to do. Absolutely. And yeah. if nothing else, let that experience be that. Yeah. So. And I too think you have to like not make excuses, right? Yeah. It's, it's not everybody's out to you get to you. Be, you have to be. Yeah. 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 You have to you take have to some realistic. ownership and some responsibility for it. But um, yeah, overall, I think you just you put you put in the time and and make the connections. Yeah. So. Well, thank you so much thank for being for on this episode. Yes, um, great. I'm so glad we got to have this conversation and got to bring this into yeah. all the spaces it will live. Um, if this is your first time joining an episode of Just Between Us Girls, thank you so much for coming. We hope that you stay. If you are returning to this episode from another one, um, thank you so much. We are now at almost 400 listeners, which is insane. Yeah, yeah. Um, to, for us to only be eight episodes in and to have so many amazing people like Christy uh, and like everyone out there listening, uh, I just want to tell you thank you so much and and thank you. So thank much. you for having me. I really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, see you soon. <laughs> All right. All right. Good Yay. job. Thank you. Thank good you. Job. How, this is yes. awesome.